Hello and welcome to Electric Bike Report. This is Pete and I have the eFlow E3 Nitro from Curry Technologies. This is the uh, just an intro to the bike and I'll have the full review at electricbikereport.com. So one of the unique features of the eFlow is the uh, integrated battery pack. This is a Samsung lithium ion battery pack. It's a 36 volt 11 amp hour pack. And there's uh, the optional upgrade to a 36 volt 17 amp hour pack, but that's only available in the larger frame sizes of the eFlow. Okay, to take the battery pack out, what you want to do is undo the seat post quick release there, and then you'll want to pull up the battery pack until the uh, connector locks into place there. And then I've closed the quick release uh, for the seat post, and then from the back, you just want to push the seat post forward and it will come off the bike. And then you'll see that this is a little connector for uh, the charging. And there's an adapter that comes with the bike, and you basically just take the one side, connect it to the battery pack there, and then this side connects to the charger that then connects to the normal wall outlet. So to put the battery pack back on the bike, what you want to do is basically the reverse as before, just take the pack, and then uh, slide it into position. Just give it a little bit of a nudge so it connects in there. And then loosen the quick release here. And then slide the battery pack back into the frame. And make sure you slide it in at least to the minimum insertion, if not further. And then close the quick release, and you're good to go. You can also charge the battery pack while it's installed on the bike. Uh, here's the uh, charging port that's down by the uh, cranks of the bike. Just slide the cap sideways, and then uh, this is the charger, and on this side here, we'll just take this uh, and plug it into the, the bike, make that connection there, and then on the other side of the charger is your normal wall outlet plug, plug that in, and then uh, on the charger itself, there's a uh, on-off switch, so when everything's plugged in, just uh, turn that on for about four to six hours. When it's done, just uh, turn off the charger, and then come along and unplug everything, close the cap and you're all set to go. So let's talk about the uh, rear hub motor. This is the 500 watt direct drive rear hub motor from TDCM and it comes with a uh, free hub body so that allows the uh, uh, 10 speed cassette block that's on the back here. So when you combine that with uh, two chain rings in the front uh, you got a total of uh, 20 years on the bike so uh, it's pretty nice. Um, in addition, you've got the uh, axle release quick release system, and the way this works is that you just um, undo the lever here, and it uh, it's very similar to a traditional uh, quick release on uh, on most bikes, um, and it has it on both sides. So uh, to disconnect the rear wheel, uh, you just do undo both levers, and then you undo the quick release uh, cabling that you can see right there, and uh, it enables you to take the rear wheel off without uh, any tools, so it's pretty handy if you get a flat or, you know, you just need to take the rear wheel off for, for some reason. Uh, so while we're, while we're back here, let's take a look at the drivetrain. This is the SRAM Apex rear derailleur and the SRAM Apex front derailleur. And this is the FSA crank and Welgo pedals. And then on the wheels, uh, we've got the Alex rims and the... Uh, Maxxis Overdrive Excel tires. Uh, these are uh, nice tires. They have a, sort of a road style, efficient tread, but they're pretty wide. They're two inches wide, and so they provide a, a you know, fairly smooth, uh, cushiony ride. Um, so, uh, speaking of uh, smoothing out the ride, here's the RST front suspension fork, and uh, this definitely takes uh, some of the edge off the bumps and cracks in the road. Uh, and what you can do here, this is the preload dial, so you can adjust the spring rate of the fork uh, depending on how much you weigh or how uh, responsive you want the fork to be. So uh, it's pretty handy. And then uh, let's take a look at the front here. The, uh, the bike comes with the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. And when you sque squeeze the uh, brake lever here, there's actually an electronic switch that will tell the, the whole electric assist system to... Uh, stop providing power. So uh, that's a pretty nice handy uh, safety feature. And uh, while we're talking about the brakes, 
here is the uh, the front uh, brake, the Tektra hydro hydraulic disc brake, and that has a uh, 180 millimeter rotor on it, and uh, definitely provides some pretty good stopping power. Uh, on the back is the same hydraulic disc brake. It's the uh, 160 millimeter rotor on the back there, and you can see the uh, axle release, quick release there, and then uh, that's the quick release for the uh, motor cable there as well. Now let's talk about the uh, the display for the bike here. This is the uh, display, and you power it on like that. So you can see the speed uh, that's the speedometer for you, your battery level indicator, um, and then POD is uh, throttle only. So uh, what you can do is just come over here and twist the throttle and uh, just go for a ride. You don't necessarily have to be pedaling uh, in that mode. But then if you want to switch it into the pedal assist mode, uh, you can just hold down the plus button for a couple of seconds and you'll see it says PAS. So then you go uh, hit the set button uh, once there and then uh, you can see the power level. Right now um, it's at the highest power level uh, in the assistance, which is 4. And then you can uh, adjust that uh, all the way down to 1, which is the lowest power assist you know, setting. So you'd be doing more of the work uh, right there. And then you can go between uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, in addition, you can also grab the throttle just for a little extra boost if you want to. So that's a pretty nice feature uh, in, the, in the pedal assist setting. Um, and then another cool thing about the display is that you can easily remove it. What you do is you just twist it. Uh, 45 degrees there and pull it off and then to put it back on you just twist it and uh, push it back on like that in addition the display has a number of different uh, settings so you can cycle through and see your max speed um, your average speed and just you know trip distance and odometer and and all of that so uh, it's pretty pretty nice it also has a backlight so if you're using it at night you just hold down the, the minus button for a while and it will the backlight will come on and then this is the SRAM front derailleur uh, shifter, the SRAM rear derailleur shifter. Uh, so overall, you know, pretty nice component spec with the SRAM, FSA, Tektro, uh, Maxxis tires, RST suspension fork. And then uh, one final thing I wanted to point out was the uh, internal cable routing. Uh, this is uh, pretty nice. It uh, brings all the cables into the frame and... Uh, you know, it provides a pretty clean look, uh, and that's that's pretty nice. You know, this is a pretty sporty, urban style bike, and uh, it's kind of nice to keep the the looks clean. So, anyways, uh, that's a f just a quick intro to the eFlow E3 Nitro from Curry Technologies, and the full review will be at electricbikereport.com. Mm -hmm.